Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now in February of 2019, I made a video about how you can put the full Windows 10 desktop on a Raspberry Pi 3. And while it was a fun project to do, while it was like, hey, geek out, look what I can do, the resulting machine, the resulting computer, wasn't really that usable. However, of course, since then, we've had the launch of the Raspberry Pi 4 and those clever people on the internet have been working hard so that we can have Windows 10 now on the Raspberry Pi 4. So if you want to find out more, please... Let me explain. Okay, so first of all, of course, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi 4, and I would recommend you have the model with four gigabytes of memory. Now, there is a bug in the processor on the Raspberry Pi 4, which means that only three gigabytes will be accessible to Windows. Now, normally in Linux, there is a patch that works around this bug, but that patch doesn't exist for Windows 10. So if you use the eight gigabyte version, you're still only gonna get three gigabytes. So the best one to use is the four gigabyte one and be happy with the three gigabytes that are available. You're also going to need an external USB Ethernet adapter. While the Raspberry Pi has Wi-Fi, Ethernet and Bluetooth built into it, there's no support for it with Windows 10 and with this method of booting it up. However, if you use an, a, a USB one, then of course there's likely going to be a driver inside Windows 10 and then that will just work without any problem. Of course, you're also going to need a mouse, a keyboard and a monitor because you are booting up a full Windows 10 desktop. Now, the first thing you need to do is to make sure you have the latest EEPROM on the Raspberry Pi. Now, the EEPROM is responsible for doing those initial, very first things when you switch it on and it allows it to boot from the SD card. Now, there is a version now that allows it to boot from the USB drive, from a USB drive rather than from the SD card. Now, it's very, very easy to do. You go to the link that's in the description below. There are about half a dozen files. You copy them onto a freshly formatted FAT32 SD card put the SD card into the Raspberry Pi, you boot it up, and then it will do its work, and then when it's done, the green light will flash continuously, and if you have HDMI connected, you'll get just a green box on the screen. And that's it, now your Raspberry Pi can boot from external storage. And so now that your device can actually boot from a USB drive, the thing to do is to prepare a USB drive with Windows 10 for ARM on it. Now I'm actually using an SSD drive inside of a USB enclosure. Of course, you can also use a USB thumb drive, but in any case, you're gonna make sure that it's a very fast piece of media. So a cheap thumb drive probably isn't gonna do it. As I said, I've had the best success using this SSD card inside of a USB enclosure. Now, the steps to actually get Windows 10 onto your USB storage are not complicated, but there's a few of them you need to go through. So let's look to see how you do that. Because Microsoft doesn't ship a kind of an ISO file for Windows on ARM64, you have to use third-party sites to kind of bring together the ISO. There's a link in the description below. Once you get to this site, you need to say we want Windows Final. And what do we want? Well, here's the important thing. You look down this list, we want the one that I worked on was 2004 ARM64. Okay, so that's the one to pick. And then it's good just to go with one language. I tried originally to go with many and it does really increase the size of a download significantly. So I'm going to go with US English, Windows 10 Professional. And then what you wanna do is you want to download the ISO compiler in one click. So you run the downloaded command file. So when you click on that, it gives you this command file here. Now you download that and then you run it inside of a command window and it will go away and do all the downloads and it will actually create an ISO file. So obviously make sure you run it on a disk that's got enough space to download and install all that stuff. And then you'll have a, an ISO file. Okay, so here, for example, you can see the command file that I ran, and then this is the resulting uh, ISO file just under five gigabytes. And that happens all automatically, obviously it takes a bit of time to download and to actually make it. Now, once you've actually managed to drop the ISO file, you need to download the Windows on Raspberry, and you're gonna need the version two here because Pi support is in version two alpha. So Windows on Raspberry, war, war 2.0 alpha, download that, and then we're gonna run it now to copy that ISO file actually onto your media. Okay, so here I am inside of that uh, war release 2.0 folder that I downloaded, and I'm just gonna run the program here, war.exe, yes, we want to run that. Now I have a blank drive, so uh, in the, it's the N drive on here, I've put it into the USB port, so we start by selecting the device. 
uh, sorry, you hit next here. So we want to select here now all my devices. Which one is it? They are flash drive, Lexo USB flash drive. And of course, I want Raspberry Pi 4. I must remind you here, be careful of the drive that you pick. You don't want to overwrite your main hard drive or any other media that you've got attached. Make sure you pick the right drive. Once you've done that, you go to next. Then you go to find the image that you downloaded using that command script. And so I found that file that I downloaded and then it allows you to pick the Windows version if it was a multi-version one. This has only got Windows 10 Pro on it, so you click next. Then you wanna use the latest available drivers on the server, yes, that's okay. Use the latest firmware available on the server, yes, that's okay. And then one final thing you need to do here is you need to go to advanced, okay? And you need to change this to 101. Uh, 8192 192 if you don't do that then not all of the memory will be recognized even up to that three gigabyte limit that we talked about so you have to put that in there and that will make sure that you get at least the three gigabytes uh, in there and then once you see all that, everything is there. It's going to my USB drive, Raspberry Pi 4, Windows 10, okay, all that stuff. And then you just click on install. So this will go ahead now and start writing all those files from that ISO uh, onto the flash drive. Now, before you plug it into the Raspberry Pi 4, there's one more step to do, and we'll come to that now once this has finished. Okay, so that has now finished, so we can click the finish button. And the final step now is to run WinPatch. Okay, so to run WinPatch, you need to go over to the WinPatch GitHub. There'll be a link in the description below. Go to here and download winpatch.zip and then unpack that and then start up a command prompt uh, with run as administrator. Okay, so here I am inside of the directory where I've unpacked a win patch. Notice at the top here is administrator command prompt. This is a command prompt with elevated privileges. I started by using run as administrator. Now you need to use a complicated command, which I will leave linked to in the description below. The point is you need to know where the drive that's now had Windows copied onto it, where it can be found. On my system, it's now been mounted as W. And you can see, for example, there is a Windows directory here. Okay, which has got all of the windows right. That's what it's been mounted on. In your system, it may be different. You need to find out where it has been mounted. And once you do, you need to run the winpatch command using W or the drive that it's got, and then this long command, which I'm going to show you, and as I said, will be in the description. So there it is, Windows Subsystem 32 drivers, USB, and then all that stuff. And if you run that, if you copied it correctly, it will go through, it will check it, and then if it's right, it will say at the end that it has been successfully patched. There you go, successfully patched, and then the address there. Okay, now the drive is ready. Okay, so now that you've got your USB drive ready, the next thing to do is boot it up. So you plug that into your Raspberry Pi. Make sure you plug it into one of the blue ports because that will be USB 3. Make sure there's no SD card in there, mouse, keyboard, monitor, so on. Connect, power it up, and then Windows 10 will start to boot. Now, the first time you boot it, it can take quite a while to sort itself out because it's kind of an installation thing and it's going through its initial configuration and it will probably reboot a couple of times. But when that has finally finished, you will have a Windows 10 desktop. Okay, so here we are on the Windows 10 desktop running on the Raspberry Pi. So let's go down to the start menu. Let's look for this PC, right hand click properties and what do we see here there you go the bcm 2711 arm cortex a72 at 1.5 gigahertz and just under three gigabytes of memory 64-bit operating system arm based processor so there we are we're running on the raspberry pi 4. now let's start up a task manager and we're going to keep that kind of ticking away in the corner as we do various things so we can see where the bottlenecks are. Is it to do with the, uh, you know, the, the CPU, the disk that I've got, the amount of memory. So there we go, four cores running there, uh, just under two gigs used at the moment. So we've kind of got one gig to play with. Of course, it would be nice if we had more, but as I said in earlier on, it can only access three gigs of the memory. Okay, so there we go. So the first thing I'm gonna try and show you is I've already downloaded uh, into the downloads directory here, some various files, and a couple of them are interesting here. This is a uh, putty the great uh, secure shell program. This is the x86 version and this is the ARM64 version. So let's run the ARM64 version first of all. And we would imagine, of course, this would run without any problems whatsoever. 
And there we have it, there it is uh, running. So you could then connect here off to, to other machines. And now of course, let's see whether you can run the 32-bit x86 version and whether 32-bit x86 emulation is working here on the Raspberry Pi. And there you go, it's running absolutely perfectly. If we click on the About box here, we'll see that it says this is, look, the 32-bit x86 Windows version. And in fact, if we go back to the other one here, then it'll actually show us that this is the 64-bit ARM Windows version. So both 32-bit Intel and 64-bit ARM apps are running. Now, the next thing I want to do is go to uh, the Microsoft uh, Store and let's see whether we've got access to that and whether that is running okay. And I'm gonna to try to install Windows Terminal. And of course I have a whole video on the Windows Terminal here on this channel if you are more interested to find out about what it can do. Now Windows Terminal is available for both uh, x86 and ARM64. So hopefully this will download the right version and run that. So let's click on install and let's see what happens. Now, one thing is worth noting here as we're waiting for that to download is look here at the CPU usage. And this is because it's running this animation here, this video here in the background, and it really is using up a lot of the CPU time. I don't suppose for a moment this has any kind of way optimized for media consumption. We will go to YouTube uh, a little later in the video and just see, but I'm uh, telling you for media consumption, this won't work. But if you wanted to do kind of ARM64 uh, Windows development or other kind of things, and this is usable. But as you can see there, as we're waiting for that to download, uh, media uh, can be a bit painful. In fact, now I've paused that and we can see now here how much quicker this download is going on because the CPU wasn't being uh, hogged by running this uh, this video in the background. So that's kind of pretty conclusive. But as I say, we will go down to uh, YouTube a little later. Okay, let's, let's launch this now. Okay, and up it comes now. So there we go. There's the PowerShell, which of course is the default with Windows Terminal. And if we go over here, we can also download, uh, run a normal command prompt. So there you go. So the Windows Terminal downloaded from the Microsoft Microsoft Store is working absolutely fine. So there are now also ARM64 builds of uh, Visual Studio Code. So let's just uh, run that. I'm just clicking on this for the first time. Let's see how this goes for the installation. So do we accept the agreement? Yes, we do. Yes, please install it. Yeah, do all the stuff. Okay, install. Great, so that's going ahead. So I will come back in a moment when that has finished installing. Okay, so that's now completed, so we'll launch that now. Okay, so here we have it. Here is uh, the Visual Studio Code uh, running the ARM64 build. Is there any way for us to check about that? About, here we go. Is it gonna tell us? There you go, ARM64. There you go, at the very bottom there, OS, uh, Windows 10, ARM64. And if we look at the performance here, Okay, that's a uh, utilization in the mid half, about 50%, 40% around about there. So there you go, so there's Windows Studio Code running as well. Okay, so let's just try the web browser and let's go to a normal website. Let's say something like Android Authority and see what that's like. So we'll type in here, Android Authority. We'll do a search for that. There we go, go to the website and let's keep an eye open now on the right hand side for the amount of CPU that's being used. That's pretty good actually, that's uh, that's not bad at all. So this is using the latest version of the uh, Microsoft Edge browser. I think this one I've managed to install is actually the ARM 64 bit version so we can scroll down there. So that's actually not so bad at all. So again, just emphasizing this is a Raspberry Pi 4 we're working on here. Okay, one final test before we wrap things up. Let's go over to YouTube. Okay, so here we are over on my YouTube channel. Let's see, yeah, Raspberry Pi, let's click on that one, the Raspberry Pi supercomputer video. I'll just skip the ads. Okay, and here's the video running. So if you look over the right hand side, we can see that that's a uh, pretty high usage, not as high as I was expecting. Maybe uh, this is good from this uh, Edge browser. Okay, but we certainly are up high here and uh, we can see a bit of, uh, you know, a bit of um, lag and stuttering there. However, a pretty impressive uh, performance from the Raspberry Pi 4.
Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, well, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.